Hi, my name is Jonathan, and now we'll be presenting the principles of our radar design project. Here we have the modulator, which outputs a triangle wave to be able to control the VCO, which stands for Voltage Controlled Oscillator. Now we have a sine wave of varying frequencies going through a splitter before being amplified by a power amplifier and being transmitted. Once the signal is transmitted, it will reflect off an object and be received by the receiver antenna, which is again amplified by a low noise amplifier, go through a mixer, go through a second gain stage, and finally through a low pass filter to be able to be processed by our laptop sound card. Hi, my name is Ryan, and this is our radar that we created in the first quarter of the EC-193. Uh, as you can see, we decided to mount all of our components on a wooden block here in the middle. This is our, these are our battery packs and our PCB that we designed instead of using a breadboard because of having um, more reliable connections. These are all of our connectorized components, and here is our audio cable that we use to interface with the laptop. Also, as you can see, we spaced out the antennas far apart. This was uh, with the intention of reducing crosstalk between the antennas. This is our ranging results. By having two people walk in front of the radar at different times, the x-axis represents the range in meters, while the y-axis represents the time. The color change represents intensity. As you can see, the first person walked 30 meters away from the radar before walking back towards the radar, while the second person started walking away before the first person got back. Here we have our range experiment running in real time. As you can see, my colleague is walking back, and as he is walking back, the range in our plot is increasing. We also perform various visualization experiments. As you can see, by attaching two LEDs of opposite polarities, we can trace the sine wave in a binary manner by having the green LED represent the peak of the sine wave, while the red LED represents the valley. These are the results of taking a long exposure picture in a dark room. Attaching a microcontroller, we are able to trace the strength of the sine wave. By switching to isotropic antennas, we also perform an interference experiment. As one can see, the interference is proportional to how far the antennas are from each other. This experiment won us first place in an IEEE MTT contest. Here we can see one of the students working on his project. Hi, my name is Tan. I'm uh, on my station now. Uh, I'm work currently working on my VCD. Hi, I'm Chris. This is our homemade reflow oven setup, and it consists of a microcontroller and a temperature sensor, which uses this thermocouple to control the temperature and the power on this oven. And uh, here's our board going in. And that's it. After five minutes, it should be done. For the second quarter, we were free to design and make various improvements to our project. As you can see, there are varying approaches for the PCBs. This one here features an Arduino shield for some uh, signal processing. This one has both the RF and baseband on the same board. Here we have a stackable board, so these would connect like that. The final product here. Here are two stencils, one bought and then one made out of a can.